Hi, uh, welcome to this very first tutorial on my channel. Uh, my name is Joost van Ake, also known as Vuton. That's my uh, producer name. And this is a track I made for my uh, small album. It's called Lightning. And I'll let you have a quick listen through it. And it's, it's not really a dubstep track, but I try to go uh, toward dubstep, but I don't really use the growls. So I don't really know what it is, but... I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Okay, from here on it's uh, the same as the first drop and then you have the ending. So that's it for this track. Uh, the purpose of this video will be to really break this uh, break this apart and uh, see how it's built up so I hope you can uh, learn something from it uh, the first thing I want to touch on is the first ID that I had for this track and that's really something I think it's important a little building block to get you started and for me it was this melody and I'll show you how I made it I made it with Serum and it's a uh, pretty basic sound. It's a, uh, it's a sa saw wave and a square wave with a little fine tuning with an LFO on it. And what this does it is it gives the square wave a bit of a, a bit of vibrating sound. Because if I would take it off it would sound kind of static and if you bring it in it gets a bit messy but that's in my opinion a good thing uh, and then I added the filter on it to make it like more of an intro part and you can hear that the upper frequencies are cut off by the filter and I added a little bit of distortion to make it a bit gritty but that's the same thing with the fine tuning all to make it a slightly different sound a little compression delay reverb and just to be honest it's just fiddling around with these knobs until you have something that uh, sounds nice so that's it for this first 
uh, intro sound. And what I did after making the this sound and melody, I made it fit with uh, some chords. And I used this pad to go along with these melody, this melody. And for those of you that don't know, it's always nice to have your melody go with uh, with the chords. So here's like a C sharp and you have a C sharp over here. So that's like the same note in the melody and in the chords. Then that way it will most of the time sound good. And for the rest, it's just following your ears. And if you go on the notes between the chords, make sure that they're not all too long like there are little notes walking up and down and here you have a longer note that's a D and oh it is a D sharp and you see that's not in the chord but I think it sounded quite nice so it's all about listening and uh, trusting your ears on that one and furthermore I use this ARP and I will show you how I made the the pad and that was with Omnisphere and I think it was a preset pad so nothing uh, nothing really fancy here and the ARP was also something uh, from Siren that I picked and it's uh, there's no shame in uh, using some uh, some patches it's just a blue triumph pad in uh, Omnisphere and the arpeggiator and if you can really see this is how you make a arpeggiated sound with the fast envelope so then you get like a really short note because if you do it like this if you make it longer oh now it's already oh, oh, oh. You see now it gets long and it's getting longer, but that's also because these notes are a bit a bit short that you can't really hear it. And if you automate the uh, the filter as well, then it will sound really plucky. And some reverb and hyper, not nothing fancy. Filter out the low frequencies to uh, to make to make it like fit a little bit better because you always in every sound you have a bit of low frequencies that you don't really hear but there are that they will clutter up your overall mix so that's it for the intro part oh no we have some uh, some effects i use the storm to get a bit of uh, ambience and a bass sound That's also with Omnisphere and I used the, uh, I think it's also called an arpeggiator in Omnisphere to make it, to give it a little texture. Filter out the high frequencies and sidechain it to your kick. And for those that don't know what a sidechain is, you basically, uh, every time your kick plays, your, uh, your bass will get filtered out with volume so that's what it sounds like every time the kick hits bass goes down oh it, it didn't even do it oh that's uh, a <laughs> that's not over here that's only over here it's not in the intro I'm sorry and then we get the little build up. And here I used four times over the same chord to create a little bit of tension. And I used a volume automation on the snares. As you can see, it goes from low to high. And that's also to create a little bit of tension. Some risers, make them a bit high pitched. 
and then you have the part in the middle in between your build up and your drop and that's really a part i struggle with a lot but what i tend to do is get um, a bit of the lead sound sound from the drop and make it like come in a little bit like this Because that way the listener will really get a feel for what's coming. Because in music you most of the time don't really want to bring in big things without um, mentioning about it. It's like the same with a conversation. I always uh, make the reference to a conversation. You In a conversation with another person you don't really want to... Um, you want to avoid saying things out of the blue. And that's the same with making music. You want to introduce things to make it sound logical. And then we get into the uh, lead sound. And this is what it sounds like on its own. And this is the first sound. And it's also made like the same in the beginning with the square wave and the saw wave. And then without the filter and again the fine tuning some distortion compression delay and reverb to make it kick through and give it a grit and then we have another sound and this sound is a bit lower and the other sound is a bit lower as well and that way um, all your sounds will fill the frequency spectrum and that will sound really good to the listener. And for the last we have an ambient sound. And I made this with some saw waves and distortion and there is, let's see. Oh no, that was the <laughs> wrong sound. It's uh, almost the same, but then with a lot of reverb and a filter. So then you can really make some different sounds and try to like pitch this one up an octave and this one down an octave and try to EQ it uh, accordingly. And then you get a really nice and full sound. And then onto the chords. Yeah, well, let me unfreeze this. Uh, the chords, they really have um, a specific pattern that I had in my head before starting this so that pattern that was already in my head and I really suggest you all try to have an idea before you uh, go somewhere uh, try to make something um, with these first two uh, I panned them a bit to the left and right to make it sound a bit more full but it's almost the same sound and it's made with uh, two saw waves um, an automated filter that goes up and some delay and reverb uh, I really think that it's more about how you um, structure your MIDI than it's about than about sound design and because I think the most people use saw waves it's about how you use them in my opinion and the last one some deeper chords and here you can see the side chain working every time the kick hits and also saw waves filter no effects pretty basic And then we go to the bass line, which is just the chord, uh, the chord structure and then the most lower note, so the bass note. And it has a really deep voice. And here you can see the side chain again. And this is an Omnisphere patch. If it will open. <laughs> it 
takes some time. And it's just basically a sine wave and some disrupted signal. I don't really know. It's just the default patch. I didn't make this. And for the drums, this is what they sound like. Uh, the kick and the snare is a pretty basic uh, sequence. And for me, the drums is really about how you fill them up. Like with these little things. Those ear candy things in between. So, and a little hi-hat I added every fourth bar or every second. No, third. One. Yeah, every first bar. No. Anyway, just throw some uh, symbols in there. <laughs> um, and you have this little ambient fill. And a reverse into the clap. yeah that's about it for the first drop and then we get to the middle part and over here uh, as you can see I changed um, the key that I was making the song in and this is called modulation and it's a um, slightly more advanced um, music theory topic but in essence it isn't really that hard because you you can easily do it by picking your chords and just picking them up and turning them down one. Here, now you modulated. Congratulations. <laughs> That's really what I did. Um, here you have the F sharp on the first note. And that's now in C G major. And on A, I had it on G sharp starting. So I took it down to... And that's now the the key. So that's a really easy way to uh, change keys. And just if you don't really know the music theory, just try it and uh, see what sounds good. And here again, then we have the ARP from the beginning, but then played by the piano. We have this uh, lovely piano here. And for me, this is all about just fiddling around on the piano and see what sounds nice. Um, and that's really where I want to say that it's, for me, it's really important to being able to play an instrument. Because you can really musically express yourself uh, on the keyboard or on the guitar or whatever you play. And that will really help your music production. So I will advise everyone to to start doing that because I can't really... Uh, explain this because I just did it on the piano and that takes a, a bit of practice before you uh, for you can not that this is all that hard but it, it takes a bit of uh, practice to being able to play the keys but if you do it then uh, you won't regret it in your music uh, productions um, and I added this uh, this cello I think it's called in English and and that really goes along with uh, the piano. So here you have the B. And here you have the B as well. And here you have the D. And there's the D. And also with this cello, it's just uh, listening and listening what feels right. Because this note, this E, this is not in the in this chord. But it sound ni sounds nice. You can really hear that that sounds okay. Because if you do it like this, that's not okay. You hear that it just doesn't sound right. So that's that way you can just fiddle around a bit and have some fun with it. And then on to the violin. I uh, The thing I did here is, uh, again, having a little conversation. 
and uh, referencing a conversation is I started some questions with the piano that's for me that's a question and then you get the answer in the violin So that's why it's uh, for me this uh, this part feels really good because it's um, it's like having a conversation between the piano and the violin and that makes it uh, a pleasant thing for me to listen to and and then again you have here the the piano arp with the same chords just like the build up over here violin going up. A little release and then you have the, the second drop and here again I use this uh, little trick with uh, introducing something that is coming and that way again the listener knows what's coming so that's basically the second drop is uh, a bit of the same again but I used uh, another bass line and did I do something new in the drums no not really and this is all uh, about the same oh yeah and I used um, a violin in here to make it sound a bit more full than the first drop I would advise to uh, bring in to make the second drop a slightly different and then for the outro it's um i abruptly stopped it here with breaking glass and then you make an end to it with the piano and the cello finishing your story And here you can like choose whatever you want. You can um, make the story go on by adding a few notes. If you end on a long note, it sounds finished. But if you end on a short note, a sh few short notes, it sounds like it's going on. No, that that wasn't really good, but you get you get the idea. You're fiddling around with it and seeing what does the job. Yeah, just that last note give you is giving you an idea of oh, there's something coming, but there's not something coming. It's like an open ending to a movie or whatever. Yeah, that's um, that's about it this track that I made and for everyone that's like uh, starting out with music production and uh, doesn't really know what to do I really will say to you just uh, push on just uh, just go on uh, when I was starting out I was really struggling like everyone is better than me and I don't know uh, I, I will never learn it you will you will pick up on uh, on things as you go along and for some it's uh, it, it takes a year and for some it takes five years and for some ten for some it, uh, it it takes even 20 before they make something uh, that's worth your while but everything is good you can't really make uh, mistakes in music it's uh it's really about that you make your thing a thing that uh, you like so yeah that's uh that's it for this video i uh i hope you learned something from uh from my musical experience and uh, if you got some suggestions for uh, what can I what I can do better in the um, following tutorial tutorial or video I uh, I would really like uh, to hear it and have a chat about it in the conversation or in the comments conversation <laughs> um, so yeah I see you in the next one thanks <laughs>